How are we going, everybody? You know what? I'm getting sick. I'm getting sick and tired of this weather. Look at it. It's 11 degrees at the moment. It feels like eight. It's been drizzling all day, and I haven't been able to get outside to do anything constructive or productive in the garden. So I thought, let's go and check out this uh, tree here, peach. That's copped a beating with a leaf curl, even though we've been spraying it. Look, it's pretty good overall. I've picked off a lot of leaves. You can see it's all settling down. We still have a little bit of leaf curl on the tops there, which I'm going to have to harvest again by hand. And that's what you've got to do. Literally pick the leaves off, folks. You can't leave them on there. Don't wait for them to fall off. Get as many off as you can by hand. And that way you'll help the tree recover a lot sooner. And that way you won't affect the fruit as well because leaving it on there will get really bad and the fruit may suffer and, and end up falling off as well. So this is, to, this is holding its ground. And I'm pretty happy with it considering all things that's going on and especially with this weather. But let's have a look at my bloody plum tree. If you don't know what this is, this is a plum tree, a two-way graft. I have mentioned it a few times, but some of us don't remember what they are. Now, this side of the tree is full of fruit. This side has got only some fruit. And this is Cara down here waiting for pats and tickles. Now, folks, I'm having a close look at it. We're getting a little bit of weathering or withering of the leaves here at the top, as you can see here. It's just getting wind blown. It's causing it to actually wilt over and I can't do anything about it. It is freezing. But what I did notice, come over here before we freeze to death. This, look at this, this here, look at that, look at that. That there is leaf curl. Now it's not like your typical leaf curl that you get on your peach and nectarine tree, folks. It is your typical leaf curl on a plum tree which is caused by a plum aphid. That's right, plum aphid. Come around here, have a look at this one over here. It's affecting the tree and this has only happened in a couple of days. I haven't been out here for a couple of days and I can't be everywhere every day. As you all know, it's a big piece of land out here. And we've got a really bad case over here. So this is where I noticed it first. It's really destroying it. <sighs> Bugger me, I'm really, really over these aphids. They're really giving us a hard time out here and we can't spray because it is drizzling. It's not gonna do anything on it. If you've got this problem on your plum tree, folks, you're not gonna use a disease control pack. You need to get yourself eco oil or eco neem or even combine the two for extra strength and spray it on it every seven to 10 days to get rid of it. You're not gonna fix these leaves. You may as well pick them off or cut that branch off or basically pick them off because I reckon it'll push out new leaves straight away. But don't leave it like that unattended. Otherwise, it will affect the whole tree and you know, no plums. The apples are flowering. The Granny Smith's coming to flower. Do not cover your trees with bird netting or insect netting until they finish flowering and set fruit. This is the only time they're susceptible to being infected by any sort of creature or insect. So monitor them carefully if you can. And as soon as they set fruit, cover them if you need to, to control codling moth. CGWS, keep that in mind. That's gonna work tremendously well on protecting your fruit as well, along with the codling moth traps. Last trees to have a look at is the orchard. Bugger me. Seriously, folks, in about a week's time, we're gonna be halfway into springtime and look at it. Look at this weather. Yeah, we're talking about La Nina, but what about the temperature? The temperature hasn't risen properly. And the average temperature, again, is sitting around 12 degrees. So how can you expect your trees to really take off? Now, I'm making reference to our property where we are out here. We're obviously a few degrees colder than where central Melbourne is, and we're talking Victoria, folks. For those in the northern parts of Australia, I've seen the weather forecast and the temperatures there are obviously much higher, much greater, and you're obviously enjoying the beautiful sunshine uh, if and when you get it as well. But for us down here, where I am here, my trees are really late this year. They've always flowered a lot sooner than this, and the apple trees in particular, they're just starting to kick on. You can see them, there's lots of gaps, and that doesn't mean the trees are dead. They just haven't woken up yet. And I can't do much about that at the moment because the weather is what controls it. Now the peach and nectarine trees, I'll just recap on what's happened to these. In the past, they got hit by leaf curl. That's my bad because I wasn't spraying them as regularly as I should have. Uh, and that happens, you know, people forget. I'm forgetful too. But we also got attacked by uh, aphids and they got really badly infested. Now I had been spraying these with the eco oil and the bluestone once I noticed the problem, which was three, four, five weeks ago, but they still got infected. Now, the aphid 
was the biggest problem for me. The leaf curl we can control to some degree by picking them off, getting new leaves to grow. This tree isn't kicking on yet because of the cold weather. It hasn't warmed up. The temperature in the soil is cold. We've, fed, we've given it a feed. We need to give it another feed and get it happening. But what I did try in relation to the aphids, and we're going to have a quick look at the other ones before the weather turns on us, is using apple cider vinegar water and some dishwashing uh, liquid. So I mixed one part of apple cider vinegar with three parts water and a few drops of dishwashing liquid and I gave these a good drenching. I was concerned about the apple cider vinegar burning it but in actual, actual fact it is low acidic apparently. It doesn't have that amazing or burning effect I should say on the plant. It's been done about three days ago. I do not see it. I haven't got my glasses on with my bare naked blind eyes. I don't see any aphids on this at all. I see leaf curl as you can see that as well. There's some new growth coming on but it's stunted. Now, I put that down to the cold weather because it's out in the open copying a beating. So there's some there. Look you can see some here as well. Some new growth coming on. If the weather decides to warm up please just warm up a little bit. <laughs> we'll be fine. Now that's this tree. There are other trees over here that were more infested by aphids. Uh, bugger me folks, this one's going to be pruned back hard. We're losing a few branches on this. Yet, aphids, aphids, aphids. Oh, they're cooked. There, there are some on here, but they're very, very minute. They're not, a, they're not going to do any damage. This is the one we did a trial on because it was infested with aphids. You remember, this is the first one, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure, actually. They all look the same now. I'm losing my mind. My head's frozen. It feels like seven degrees at the moment out here, folks. I just checked the little bomb reader there. This one here, again, leaf curl. So we're working on the aphids at the moment. We can't treat both of them at the same time. We have, look, we've got very few aphids on here. No, there's nothing in them. You know, when you squeeze them, they smear on your fingers and leave a little bit of a brown smear. Not happening at the moment, not happening. So that's good, which is a good sign. Hopefully the trees will recover. This one, which is smaller, is looking better. New leaves again, but stunted from the cold. Can't do anything about that. Nothing on here. Going to do them all. I'm going to do them all lifetime here, folks, because I've got to do it anyway. Any aphids? No. I think it's worked. So for those who missed what I said there earlier, new growth, look at that. So some blistering going on, but yet new growth. We'll deal with that with the leaf curl. We can deal with that. It's the aphids that cause more damage than the leaf curl does in the short term. This has still got fruit on it, believe it or not. It might be cooked. No, it's holding it. It's okay. Now, it was apple cider vinegar, folks. One part of that, three parts water, and I use an earth-friendly dishwashing liquid, uh, about three or four drops in it. Give it a good shake and spray them. And you've got to put it to the point, spray it to the point of runoff. Oh, bugger me. I haven't taken the leaves off this one, have I? At all. I've taken no leaves off here. That's aphids in there, I think. If I'm not mistaken, but there's nothing coming out of them. They're dry, they're dead. I think it may have worked. I'm not sure if anybody else has tried apple cider vinegar, but if you have, share some comments on our little post here so we know your results. These things have to be picked off, all right? So that's what I'm gonna to do to this tree here. Pull all these off, clean it up, and hopefully it comes good again. Hopefully, <laughs> oh God. Anyway, the last row down there, let's have a look at them. This is one that I cleaned as well, so you can see it's, the results are better. Still got a bit of pinking on the leaves. Leaf curl, got to cut the dye back on it. But again, let's look for aphids. Mate, I reckon it's worked. Honestly, I reckon it has worked. Apple cider vinegar. <laughs> Sprinkle some in your salad and some on your trees. Now, when you do spray your trees, folks, Remember, I'm not doing it on days like today where it's cold and windy and wet. I sprayed it on a day that it was nice and calm and it was about 17 degrees. So that's the sort of temperature you need to look for to spray your trees. You don't want a high windy day, but again, apple cider vinegar is harmless on you. But again, for the tree, if it's raining and drizzling like this, it's not going to work. It's going to weather it down or wash it down a bit more. This one's looking better already. Again, I haven't sprayed it for uh, Leaf curl, this one's got, this was riddled with leaf curl and aphids. This is the one that had a lot of aphids on it. Maybe this one's copped it. Oh, I don't know. Can you come and have a look at this one for me, mate? I'm just going to take this leaf off carefully. 
and see if it smears all over my fingers or just turns to, nah, they're gone. I reckon they're cooked because they're still stuck on the leaves because they were congregating in thousands on there. But I don't think they're actually alive. And if they are, they're very, very weak. They've shrunk in size too, folks. They're a lot smaller by size. Have a look in here. There's a few in here. I can't even tell if they're alive or not because they're so minute. But I reckon, no, I reckon they're gone. They've turned to dust. Have a look at my fingers. See it? They've really are, they have been cooked by the apple cider vinegar. Yeah, nah. Nah, they're not, they're not alive. I think it's worked. So we've just got to wait for a good day to come, folks, and we can clean all these trees up with a bluestone, pull off all the affected leaves. We've got fruit all over this one here as well. Geez, they look terrible, don't they? They really do, they really do. But we've got to treat them, we can't do anything about it. This is what happens with nature. Everything's got to eat. Everybody's got to have a little bit of their, their little bit of bread or food, whatever they love to eat. In this case here, it's peach and nectarine tree. So, folks, keep out of the cold if you're in a cool climate like I am here. If you're in a nice warm area, look after your trees and spray them and clean them as you need to. Apple cider vinegar, water, and a couple of drops of dishwashing liquid, earth-friendly stuff on your trees for aphids, and that's what I'm going to use on my plum tree as well to see if I can control that and get ready for all the other nasties like codling moth, citrus gall wasp, leaf miner and all the rest, pear and cherry slug. CGWS is the go now to be spraying your trees as a preventative on your fruit because that's what they're going to affect. Except for your citrus trees, they go into the branches. So protect your trees with the gall wasp traps and the CGWS spray to look after them. Now, if you're looking for our product range, uh, our prices are going up, folks. Unfortunately, we can't keep them down forever. What we've done is set up our VIP group. So if you subscribe to the magazine, that's Vasily's Garden to Kitchen magazine, you automatically become a VIP member, which means it gives you access to the VIP section of the website where you get your wholesale rate prices on all our products. Simply subscribe to the magazine, that's VasilisGarden.com, and automatically become a VIP and enjoy shopping at discounted prices every day of the year. From me, Vasily, Maresi.